Hey guys, it's Michael Fisher with PocketNow.com. We wrapped up the AT&T hands-on event last night in New York City. I decided to come out into the country for the weekend, but before we get to relaxing, which will not be on camera, I want to do a little bit more play with the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Specifically, I want to talk a little bit about the stylus and all the cool things we can do with it. So I'm going to put together a real quick video to show you all the functionality of the S Pen, as Samsung is calling it. So tune in. It's Michael. Pocket now. It's the Galaxy Note 2 stylus lesson. S Pen lesson. Okay, so obviously one of the differentiating features of the Galaxy Note 2 is that S Pen, which actually lives in a dock right down here to the right of the home button if you're looking at the device from the front. What's nice is, as we saw in the Galaxy Note 10.1, you pull out the S Pen, and when you flip the device back over, it has executed an action that you've programmed it to take. Uh, out of the box, this is actually not the default behavior. This is something I've said. I've set it to automatically open S Note, but you can hop into the S Pen section of the settings and actually have the Galaxy Note to do any number of things when the S Pen is removed. So that's handy right there. One of the nice things about using the S Pen on this display is that the display will register the S Pen even when it is not touching the glass. As you can see, I'm still hovering over the glass of the display screen here, but there's, I'm not actually touching it and there's a little indicator on the screen to show me where the screen thinks the S Pen is currently living. And that's very handy for websites like pocketnow.com that feature drop-down lists where you can hover over them without actually selecting them and you can scroll down a list that way. When you find the item you want, you just tap it to select. That's also handy in applications like S Planner, where you can hover over certain events and get a popover without actually jumping into the app any further. And also in applications like Messaging, where you can hover over a message to read its contents once again without actually jumping into the message itself. You might also remember this functionality from our time with the Galaxy Note 2 at IFA in the gallery here where you can hover over different albums and have them display all their photos before you actually jump into the one that you want. And then of course, there's on-device video. Samsung has thoughtfully provided a very beautiful video for us to test this feature on. you can hover in the timeline without actually jumping ahead in the video. Find the area you want, then finally select it. But you'll notice here that the S Pen, if we can get focus, actually does feature a button on the side of it. There's no battery inside the S Pen. This is a button that works on magic, apparently. Whatever the science is, if you hold down the button while tapping on the screen and holding, the device takes a screenshot instantly pops up that screenshot, then allows you to do things like crop it, edit it, and so on. Of course, capturing screenshots aren't all that it's good for. Press and hold the button once again, and just do a vertical swipe up on the display. Samsung has provided a nice quick command feature. You can then draw a symbol much like a shortcut key on a uh, device with a physical keyboard. And then, in this case, I did the crosshatch, it opened up the dialer, and you can actually, well, if you're faster than I was just then, you can write out the number and the dialer will complete the call for you. That is pretty cool. It's not faster in any sense than actually opening up the dialer with your fingers, but it is somewhat cooler. And just to be complete here, we'll do a little at symbol, a very sloppy one and write a recipient's name to send them an email. Well, isn't that fun? What if I wanted to email Brandon Miniman? Sloppiest handwriting ever, probably not gonna work for us. Jumping to the email composer, Brandon Miniman. Okay, well, it didn't complete the address field, but it definitely did understand what I wrote. Baby steps, baby steps. One of my favorite shortcuts, though, with the Galaxy Note 2 and its S Pen functionality is achieved by holding down the button and double tapping anywhere. It'll pop open an S Note, as you can see here, and you can instantly take a note if you want to jot something down. Don't forget X, whatever. You can see 
my handwriting has not improved over time. But this is very handy because you can be anywhere in the device. You can be in the browser once again if we want to hop in there, go on into the web pocket now we're reading, oh yeah, the Razor M review, oh this is awesome, I have to remember to do this. Press the button, tap tap, boom, there it is right there. Very handy, here's my note, saved. That is something I learned last night at the AT&T Unwrapped event. A very helpful Samsung rep helped me discover that one and it was really, really, really handy. Has already come in handy a couple times today. Obviously you can move it around and if you want to cancel, you just go ahead and cancel. I've used Samsung's S-Memo application and results have been mixed. You hop on into a note here and I was having some trouble deciding exactly how hard I needed to press with the stylus to get it to register. One of the things that you have to become aware of is that the S Pen doesn't really engage unless you feel there's a little click and you can see that rubber tip kind of going into the S Pen a little bit. If that doesn't really happen, there is no response from the display. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking you want to do a lot of featherweight coloring in here. You really, you, it, you, it is a very light press. I'm not suggesting you have to really press very hard on it, but initially I thought that I would have a little bit more sensitivity than we're actually getting from the device. That said, once I was done with all the handwriting experiments, I was able to whip out a fun little drawing of this planet here, which, despite the glare, I think you will agree, is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Nice software touches here make this look like it's a, uh, a watercolor marker that has soaked into the paper at points and that has not at others. Nice little detail there. Helps make the experience just a little bit more fun. As I touched on before, there are an, an, there is a whole array of S Pen settings that you can use to calibrate and change the behavior of the S Pen as you see fit. You can set your dominant hand between right and left hand. You can set the sound that the device plays when the S Pen is removed, on or off. You can set it to automatically open the pop-up note, as we saw at the beginning of the video. That's how mine is set. Um, the pen detection can be disabled. This kind of the, the hovering effect that we demoed before can be disabled. If you want to save battery life, it'll crank down the sensitivity of the displays. I believe how it's doing that. The S Pen Keeper is actually pretty cool. That'll alert you if you've removed the S Pen from the device and then you try and walk away with the device without the S Pen in its stock. It'll use the accelerometer, detect it's moving without the S Pen, and it'll say, hey, go back and get your S Pen because they're tough to replace. Um, air view, of course, you can uh, modify the, the hovering behavior. Sound and haptic feedback, you can turn on and off. Quick command settings, we saw those before. And S Pen Help, which is a series of fun tutorials. Samsung, obviously, really, really good still. Uh, including a lot of tutorials as they did on the Galaxy S3 to help you learn stuff that you do not already know. And just to briefly jump back into S Note here, not S Memo as I called it before, sorry, there are just a whole bunch of predefined formats here. This one is called Financial Information. And it, they're essentially just templates like you might find in a word processing program that uh, allow you to, or that aim to allow you to make the most out of these out of your S Pen and uh, the applications that come with them. Um, interestingly, as you might see, I just tried to use the S Pen to activate the capacitive buttons flanking the home screen here. It does not. This is not a new development, it's not news. Just keep it in mind, you will have to somewhat clumsily alternate between on-screen inputs and coming up here with your finger if you want to activate the back or menu buttons. Finally, we'll just give you a real-world example of usability on, uh, on the S Pen here. You have a look at Jaime Rivera's email here asking if the Lumia 920 is in fact 30 grams heavier than the Dell Venue Pro. Well, we can find that out and we don't have to do a whole lot of typing to do it. Through the magic of editing, I've just hopped on over to Google here and typed in Lumia 920 weight. We'll wait for the browser to load that up and we got our answer. How much does Lumia smartphone Way Lumia 920, can we get any of them in these? Yes, weight 185. We'll assume this is a primary source. We're not gonna do too much fact checking on Jaime's behalf. Circle it while pressing the button. Boom, there we go. There's our screenshot. We hit email, copied to clipboard. Boom, it is inserted in the email for us. And all we have to do is enter Jaime's name, send him the screenshot, and it is done. No typing necessary. This is also probably a pretty good opportunity to demonstrate the handwriting recognition. More on this once again in our full review. Let's see if we can get our focus back. 
doing the best I can. Boom, it is auto completed up here, we hit it, there it is. Send, he's gonna get that with no context at all and uh, you know, that'll be all right. And of course, though this is not gonna be news to many folks at the end of the day, you're done using the S Pen, you pop it right back in the dock, phone gives you a little haptic buzz to let you know that it knows that the S Pen has been replaced and you are free to use your fingers about the interface. That's going to do it for the Galaxy Note 2 S Pen lesson. I uh, hope you learned some things that you didn't know before and uh, hopefully you can teach me something I didn't know before. Leave me a comment in the post at pocketnow.com. Not here on YouTube, we generally don't check those very often. Follow us on Twitter at pocketnowtweets. Follow me on Twitter at, at Captain Two Phones. Stay tuned for a lot more Galaxy Note 2 coverage as we continue getting our hands all over this device, learning everything there is to learn about it, and of course our full review coming a little bit later on next week. Thanks everyone for watching. Throw us a thumbs up if you liked the video, and we'll see you next time.